Hello team, it is May 1st. Um, even though it's been May for a couple of days now in Park Lane world, but it, in the real world, it is May 1st. Um, and just as a quick reminder, tomorrow is the end of week one of May. So if you are going for the consistency award at convention, um, remember 11 out of 13 weeks of activity, you're gonna get a big beautiful necklace up on stage. Um, if you're going for the gift card consistency award for Founders Weeks, then um, again, it's a matter of how much you're putting in each week. If you put 150 in each week, that's the size of the gift card you're getting. If you're doing 300, if you're doing 1,000, there's all different levels. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please make sure that you backtrack into the field interface and take a look at the network. Um, and then finally, remember that every week this month, Park Lane is raffling off a trip to Greece among everybody that submits 300 that week. Now here's the thing, be the smart people, because there's still, despite all of this, tons and tons of people will wait till the end of the month to submit their stuff. So if you are the smart people who submit the first and the second week of the month, your chances are going to be better to win than the rest of the people who wait. So I promise you, if you put in $300 this week, you put in $300 next week, you will have a greater chance of winning. And for those of you that like buy lottery tickets or go to Vegas, Atlantic City, you have a better chance of winning this than any public lottery you've ever entered. So if you were to just collect a $50 order a few days a week, you'd have your $300 in sales to put in. So if you're like, oh, I don't have a show this week, guess it's not in the cards for me. No, you're gonna go find another way to find $300 in sales for this week. We're not just throwing our hands up in the air. I looked um, over my calendar and I definitely had a misbalanced month. Like I have four shows this week and then my next show was the was like towards the end. And I was like, wait a minute, how am I gonna get, how am I gonna make it in on all these middle weeks? So I did a few more reach outs and now I have a show on the 23rd, which is great because we booked a sip and style for the 22nd. So if I can get loose guests to come to that, I'll just close that right away for that week. You know, um, there's personal appointments, there's flash sales, there's all kinds of ways to generate those 300 besides just looking at your calendar and saying, oh, guess not this week. No, yes, this week. Find a way. If you want to win a trip, if you want to be consistent and, you know, have great paycheck consistent paycheck coming in that's the type of activity that it takes so um let's just realize when to change this okay so today's topic is the six elements of a successful show now a lot of you put a lot of time and effort into booking your shows right we all do we take the time to call and text we take the time to follow up when we get to the show Having a structured and fun and great show that inspires people to want more is what's going to propel your business because most of your shows are going to be booked from shows or should be booked from shows. So when we're doing, you know, book four every week, if you can get most of them at shows, it's so much less work than to always be doing like finding four shows out of the blue. So today we're going to go over what are those six elements to the show that are going to make it so that you're getting the most out of every show. None of you joined this business because you were bored and you just needed something to do to hang out extra. So I want you to get the most out of, you're going to take the time away from your household, from your family, from your significant other, from your pets, then, um, I want you to get the most out of it. So the six elements, the six key elements of a successful show. Number one is the meet and greet. So this is when you're establishing with your guests that you're one of them. Okay. So that means a couple of things. It means not being so early that you're like annoying to your hostess but not coming in after the majority of the guests and coming in frazzled and now you're 
you're in the way, like trying to get set up or you get there and the hostess thought that that little side table was going to be enough. Now her food's where the jewelry's got to go and now she's moving stuff and you've created like a thing. Okay. So that's the one thing. But the other thing that you don't, that you want to be, you, you meet and greet means just that. Going up to people as you meet them and say, hi, I'm Michelle. And you are? Because then everybody seems to have the, um, like, because sometimes I'll say, hi, I'm Michelle. And they're like, hi. Like, really? Are we, have we reached adulthood that you don't know the response to that is, hi, I'm Sue. So you have to get yourself into the habit of saying, if, if, especially, you know, not don't let too much time go. I give them a chance to answer. But if they don't, I'll say, and you are? Um, that's an adult thing to say, and that is how you find out people's names who don't have the adult sensibility to respond to you saying your name with them saying their own. Um, a great time to do this also is when you're putting jewelry on them. That is one of the things I love about putting jewelry on the guests as they arrive, is that it gives me the opportunity to introduce myself and find out their name and um, you know chat a little bit. I always compliment them in some way while I'm doing that. So um, I would compliment the color or the style or whatever it is, something about them. I compliment people on their hair. There's always something to compliment about somebody. So pay them a genuine compliment, learn their name, put the jewelry on, and now you're just chit-chatting. This is your chance to establish yourself as be what they are. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. There's different groups have different personalities. Do you ever see my cousin Vinny where she's like, yeah, you blend. Okay, this is where you blend. So if you're with like, I've done shows with like older church ladies and they're quiet and whatever. So I don't come in with my guns blazing to the older church lady show. I speak softer. I talk about how I went to Catholic school. I ask them, um, you know, what is the organiz what are the ministries that their church has? And that's how I conduct myself at a show like that. When I go to a show like my show on Friday night, where it is the quintessential Long Islanders that I wish I was Facebook living it for all of you, because all of you out of staters would have been peeing in your pants, vomiting, laughing if you saw my crew on Friday night. I'm talking the big perms and the shouting and the not for nothing, but I'm telling you what, okay, this was my crew Friday night. So guess who was not for nothing in? And, you know, I, I know, right? I mean, who's talking? What are, you, what, are, who, what are you talking wearing that? You're not wearing that. Get that off. We're going to give you a better piece. This is how I talk when they come at me like that. So be what they are so that now you're one of the gang. And they still want to hang out with you because I'm going to remind you for what I think will be the millionth time. The number one reason people will book with you is because they have fun and they like you. So if you can do your best to be what they are, they're more apt to want to hang out with you again. Okay. There's definitely not going to be the guarding of the table right? Where people are coming in and you're just kind of like standing next to the table, not really saying anything because you're like waiting to start. No, that is bad strategy. That definitely sets the tone of I am the sales lady, you are the guest. And we'll get to each other when you have a visa card in your hand. And that is not at all setting the tone for fun or bringing you around to their friends again. Okay. Part two, the second, the second element to your successful show is your show opening. Okay, so this is, you get one shot to wow them with what this evening is going to be about or what this day is going to be about. So you want to share with them the three services that you offer and give them an idea of like what's in it for them to be there on that night. Okay, so we're definitely not doing a whole thing. I'm not saying you can't say something about, you know, Park Lane's been around for 62 years, but you're definitely not going into like a whole boring expedition about the history of the company and the history of yourself and blah, blah, blah. They just had an introductory glass of wine. They're wearing some jewelry. They're ready to hang out. 
They know that this is the spiel part of the show, and we want to assure them that this part's going to be just as fun as while you were coming in and eating the nachos. Okay, so you're saying your name, you know, you're introducing yourself. So, you know, hi, my name is Michelle. I'm going to be doing the show for you tonight. You don't have to get into a whole thing about what your title is. No one cares. So it's just, I'm Michelle. This is Park Lane Jewelry. Um, by a show of hands, how many of you is this your first Park Lane show? Always ask that question because it gives you an idea of who your newbies are and who your groupies are. And that sends a few messages. It sends a message of, this is not flooded. It sends a message of, gee, if I wanted to sign up, look at all these people that have never seen it before. But yet there are a few people who do. Um, so you're in for a treat, and I am so glad that you're here. Tonight, I'm going to show you some beautiful jewelry pieces. We have every different style and all types of colors and metals to suit every taste, and you are just going to be blown away by our amazing sale. Okay, so right there, they're like, ooh, that sounds good, <laughs> right? So, um... You know, I'm sure that you're going to fall in love with so many pieces of our jewelry that your biggest problem is going to be deciding what to get here tonight. So if you find yourself in that position, then the best thing to do would be what Jen is doing here tonight and get a couple of girls together to enjoy the jewelry as well. Um, so that's, you know, just dropping a little seed about, hey, if your list gets really long, then... Jeanette, are you like blow drying your hair or mowing your lawn? I thought it <laughs> I'm dying laughing over here. I'm sorry. Oh, it was you? Or no? No. <laughs> no. Someone's either blow drying or leaf blowing. Um, so, because here's the thing, you know, the thing about jewelry is you see it, you like it, you buy it right? So imagine what you could do with an extra $600 a month. If that's something that appeals to you, watch what I'm doing tonight. And I would love to talk to you a little bit about, uh, a little more about that later. So with that, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of Park Lane. Okay, done. Now we're ready to get the show started. Now, your show part really can only be in 2018, like 20 to 25 minutes because people have had enough at that point. Back in the day, I've been in direct sales for 18 years. There was a time where I could do a one hour show and people paid attention the whole time and I had a captive audience and that ship has sailed. People are busy. They are in no mood to listen to anybody for an hour. So 20 to 25 minutes really is it. So that will include the explanation of the details of the sale. So this is part three, by the way, the actual show. Did we get that, that that was part three? So sorry. <laughs> so part three is the actual show. So recapping the sale and do that by showing them groupings. So if you're not setting up your rollers or your trays in a way that makes it easier for you to do that, then that's something that you may want to rework your trays and your rollers a bit so that you can lead with, you know, with two with two pieces at regular price, those two are going to be your lowest. Then you're going to get as many as four pieces at half. So let's say you came here today just because you want, you know, you want to start off with just a couple of fresh pairs of earrings. And now you show them the Encore earrings and you show them the Moana earrings, right? And you do a quick spiel about how they're lightweight, they're easy to wear, they match lots of things. And now you show them the Silver Unicorn because you, that goes nice with the Moana, and if you did the Moanas in silver, let's say. You can show them the silver unicorn, you can show them a blurred lines bracelet, you can show them a lifestyle bracelet, pieces that go with it as examples of these, um, this whole set would go together, you would get these two at regular, you would get these for half, and I'm not saying to get into all the pricing, I do say the prices of the low ones, 
but I don't get into like, and this one is 46, you get it for 23. That's too much, nor do I um, care to or have the ability to remember all that pricing. I'm just saying, you know, you would point at that point. This one's half, this one's half, and now this bracelet is going to be a bonus item. What's a bonus item? And you can explain that. So just do that a couple of times. Have a couple of examples set up. Use your guests. If you already have a nice piece on somebody from when they came in, complete the look, okay? So if she wants this necklace, this is an eight, you know, the ballerina necklace is 64. Now I don't want that to be a full price item for her. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get her two two earrings. These are normally 36 and we're gonna get her the classiques, which are whatever those are, 30, right? Now she's getting this necklace for the same price as the earrings and she's already qualified for a bonus item. So now we're able to get her this beautiful edge necklace Edge Echo, Echo necklace, which normally would be an over $100 piece. She's getting it for $25 because she bought these two at low and this one for half. This is vi helping people visualize the sale. And sets are really what help, you, you'll get people that'll come up and say, I just wanna do that whole, that whole rose gold set you had on her, I, I want all of that. And then you're like, cha -ching. Um, Actually, McDonald's sales went up 65% when they put together all of those, you know, what are they called? The value meals. 65% um, their sales increased. Because I'll be honest, when I came, when, I, I try not to eat that, but when I do, um, people probably would not every single time have gotten the fries and the meal and the drink, you know, they'd be like, oh, I have a water bottle in the car. I'm just going to get the sandwich. No, it's so much easier to just be like, I'll have a number one because you are, you're, if you're driving up, you're probably in a rush. It's like some of our guests aren't staying the whole time. So um, this is where it's important to use your descriptive words, okay? Not every necklace can be your favorite. Not every necklace can be the best. Not every piece is just gorgeous. They are all just gorgeous, but that's not the proper way to explain them. So I think what I might do is next week, I'm going to make a note right here. So see, this is how I decide what we're doing for Lunch and Learn. Next week's Lunch and Learn, I'm going to do the descriptive language for how to, how to do... Um, how to describe jewelry. I'm writing that down. Jen Ewart, you're in charge of reminding me. <laughs> Next week. That's one of my favorite things actually to do as a training because um, I feel like with the advent of texting and everything, people's spoken language is becoming more and more limited. And when you're in sales, you can't allow that to happen because not every piece can be your favorite or just beautiful or whatever, okay? This is also where the benefit selling comes in. So remember how that was two weeks ago's Lunch and Learn or three weeks ago where we talked about how the various jewelry solves a problem? So um, if you were not on that Lunch and Learn, I really encourage you to go back and check that one out. That was actually one of the most, that was probably the most popular one from April. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that. Okay, F part four of the um, successful show, the key elements to a successful show is the booking and recruiting seeds that you are planting throughout your, your showing. Okay, so the booking and recruiting seeds are all the little things you say all along that make people want to inch towards booking a show with you or saying yes when asked, would you like to take a closer look at the business? Okay, so um, we've told people, you know, I'm going to make sure your friends have a fabulous time. People are going to try before they buy. Um, they're going to be blown away by the sale. So we have to do those things when they get there. Okay, so you can say things like, even just a simple sentence like, why in the world wouldn't you want to get a few friends together? Because that's the type of thing that when you hear that, you're like, 
That's true. How do you think they sell sham wows and stuff like that? Because they're like, you'd be crazy not to get this. I just picked up eight, eight gallon spill of lemonade with one sham wow. And you're like, I do need a sham wow. My kids spill stuff all the time. And before you know it, you're getting the three pack because they wait, there's more for $2 extra. We'll ship you this. And, da, da, da. and before you know it, you have the sham wow value pack and you own a sham wow mop and a sham wow blanket and the car sham wow. And all this stuff, when all, when you, you know, because they said you'd be crazy not to get it. So, um, you know, just little things like that are helpful. And then the practical ones, like, you know, I just happened to get this set, like the buzz. I'm going to say it again. If you did not earn the buzz in eight, when was it? March? The, bu the buzz set, if you did not earn in Rich Rewards, um, for the ensemble of the month, just get it with your normal rich rewards. Now those earrings and that bracelet are flying. The earrings are gorgeous and they're $31 as I should have set up jewelry before the call. I'm sorry, um, to show you what I meant, but those are selling at $31 half price items. And then that bracelet is 174. People are taking it for bonus item at every single show since I started selling it. Yes, that is the bracelet. Thank you, Jen. Jen, say something. So you're the big screen. Here it is. I'm going to try to find the earrings. They're close to. <laughs> okay, good. You know, it's an off-white. It's got the crystals. It's stretchy, but it's not so thick because I'm not big. I don't know why. Like, I'm not a fan. For me personally, I feel like I look, I feel like I look like I have short, fat arms if I wear big, thick bracelets. Like, I don't wear flare. I don't wear the Finch bracelet, things like that. And they look great on other people. I don't like the way they look, but that is thinner. So even somebody like me who doesn't like big fat bracelets is still loving that bracelet. Um, so when you mention that you got that set free in a, in a promotion that allows you to earn free jewelry, that's planting a seed of, geez, her job gives her free jewelry? I would like free jewelry. So these things all add up in people's minds. Okay, um, the recruiting talk. This is not an optional part of the show. This is something that so many people are willing to drop when they feel the show is getting long and people are getting antsy. And you're like, you know what? I don't think anyone here is interested anyway. I'm just going to skip that and get to the end of the show. The, all of these elements of the show are equally important. So if you wouldn't leave out showing all of your silver stuff, if you wouldn't leave out doing um, a show close of some sort, then why would you leave out the recruiting talk? Because the people who aren't interested aren't listening and they drive away and they forgot you even did it. But the people who are interested, they need to hear it. And if you left it out on a day that somebody sitting there really needed you, that's just mean. People need this, the business opportunity. All of us were given the opportunity at some point to make the decision for ourselves. What if that day that person decided, I'm not asking. Even if you're not, even like some of you may not even be in touch still with the person who recruited you, right? I know, see that that's the case a couple of, in a couple of cases, but you're still always grateful to the person to have shared it with you in the first place. So we want to be that person to someone else because if someone else, um, if we leave it out, we have now completely taken the chance away from somebody to change their life. And that is not, um, that's just not allowed. So um, the recruiting talk, that is where you're going to give a real brief, um, and you know, how you do that is really up to you. As you know, I'm a big fan of doing my recruiting album and the Q&A. That is really where the majority of my recruiting talk comes in. Um, where I say, you know, I started in this business and I, I feel like every time I say it, some of you are like, dear Lord, stop it already. I can't listen to her tell her story again. Then I look up top and I see there's always new people who haven't heard it. So, you know, I got started in this business when my son was six months old. I was on maternity leave for my teaching job. And my husband said to me, if you could make $600 a month for our Cobra that we're paying for the health insurance, that would be great. 
So I ordered a kit. I did three shows. I made $600. And my husband was like, wow, could you make $1,000? So that's kind of where it all started. And then the business has continued to grow. I was with that company for 14 years. And then four years ago, Park Lane called me. And I feel so fortunate because Park Lane is the only direct sales company that if you have previous experience will bring you in at that level of experience. So I looked at their programs, found them to be far superior, and I've been here enjoying an amazing business for the last four years, helping both people with no sales experience at all to be successful and those with experience to be successful. So that's why I bring around my little Life with Park Lane album, which shows pictures of us at, sh at events like this. That's why I like to take your pictures in the jewelry, because I want you to make my album. Um, when we go to conventions and we get awards, we earn multiple vacations a year. So I have pictures in here from Punta Cana, from Hawaii, New York City, Miami. Um, I still have to get the ones off my phone from Zurich, but we just got back from there. We're going to Greece soon. And I know that's very nice and all, Michelle, but do you really make money selling Park Lane? In fact, I do. In the back here, I have a series of paychecks that you could take a look at so that you will know this is actually a real job that pays real money. So, hand it off. This is your chance to ask me any question about either hosting the get together and getting free jewelry like Jen's doing here today, or my job of selling the jewelry. Um, my job of selling the jewelry. Any question on either of those topics gets you another ticket. The more tickets you have, the greater your chances are of winning my little jewelry prize. And I hold up a bag. And then they ask the questions. So that is um, my recruiting talk as well as how I get Q&A info out there for both booking shows and the business. Okay, any questions on that point so far? All right, so then we're up to part six. So the sixth key element to a successful show is the checkout, which is also kind of a little mini show extension. So checkout time means it's time to do the orders, right? But they're not generally ready just yet. So you are still able to do a little more show before that first person is truly ready. And what I mean by that is, one of the things I say in the wrap up is, all right, ladies, we've now reached the very sad portion of the evening where you have to remove the jewelry that I put on you. Um, not because I don't, not because I think you're gonna go home with it, but because people have been eyeing you up and they wanna try on what you're wearing. So um, come on up to the table, I'll help you take it off and um, you know, we'll get it all set. I also have catalogs I'm going to put out for you, and you're welcome to browse, etc. right? So now they have to come up to the table, and I'm helping them remove their stuff, but now I'm chit-chatting again with them. So they're coming up, and now somebody will say, can you take this off me? I know you looped it around like four times. So now she's in unicorn, right? So now somebody else is saying, wait, what's that one Linda has on? And I'm saying, oh, that's the silver unicorn. And remember, that comes in the other colors, too. That was in the black, this one. And now say somebody's standing to my left in a print top. I'll say, remember how I was saying this is the good one to accessorize a print top? Because prints and jewelry, sometimes the jewelry doesn't show up on a print. But the solid black unicorn creates so much sparkle on top of the print that it's really perfect for a print top. And then, of course, the lavender ones over there. So I've just done a whole additional sales spiel when really what I'm doing is helping them take the jewelry off. So there's going to be a lot of that that goes on as you help people remove. They're coming up close. Now there's their friend that was sitting across the room is now standing right next to them. So what was that one? Is that the one she said has no clip? Yep. The lifestyle and the Royce are both real easy to put on. So if you have, you know, issues with fingers or nails or whatever, try one of these on. This comes in the, that comes in the hematite too. Let me grab that for you. Okay. That's all happening here until it's time for somebody to really need to order. Now you sit down and you do a complete order checkout with them, which does not mean you're just adding them up and that's it. If you just, if you think your job 
is just to add up the orders, then do me a favor, go work at Target. That's what that job is, adding up the order, right? That we need to do way more than that. This whole business is about meeting needs and forming relationships. So we need to now see what is it that they need and how can I continue to help this person? They're not getting all the jewelry pieces they want. How can I help them get more? by booking a show? Do they want business information? Um, have they completed the survey on the back of the wish list? Because if they say no to a show and they say no to joining the business, then I definitely am going to see if they would like VIP follow-up. And I'll say, now, you don't have to be invited to a party to take advantage of this sale or even hostess benefits. One of the services I offer is seasonal uh, personal appointments so that when you go ahead and book your when you go get your new outfits and stuff for, for the beginning of a season I come by with the jewelry and do a one-on-one -on -one. that can be included in Christmas shopping and things like that as well would you like me to put you on my VIP appointment list and a lot of times they say oh okay now they may not take me up on the appointment when I call but what if they do other people will say, one of them, one of the women said right away, I would love for you to come to me at Christmas. I hate going out shopping. No problem. I will bring everything to you. We'll gift shop. Everything arrives in a gift box or pouch. So I'll be back in touch in November. So that way you're getting every piece of information that you need. You get a referral. You're booking a show. Um, I can't emphasize enough the importance of getting the date on the calendar. Because when people say, yeah, I mean, I guess I can let you know. My, well, my favorite is, I'll let Sue know. Why would you let Sue know? She's not doing the party. So, um, but when people say, you know, I guess, yeah, I guess maybe I'd have to look at my calendar. Okay, what I do every single time is say, I got my calendar right here, right? So I'll say, all right, well, you know what? Let's just take a look at what's even available so that you're not looking at dates that I don't even have. So let me take a look here. So now I get it open, okay? And now I'll say, well, do you even have maybe just a calendar on your phone that we could maybe just pencil something in so that we don't have to play phone tag for three days? And a lot of times they will. They will pencil something in, but you have to make it easy for them by opening the calendar, suggesting they check their phone, you know, all of these things that help get it on. If they're not even ready to do that, I'll even, then another transition that I'll try is, um, all right, well, if you were to have it, do you know what you would want? Like, would you want a Friday night like tonight? Or are you thinking more of like a weeknight, a brunch? So now she'll say, well, I guess, I guess I probably would have a Friday because this is good. I'll say, all right, well, those are super popular. So maybe I better, let me just at least see what I have. So now I open that up and I'll say, all right, so um, really the only Friday that I have left in May is the 18th. Do you want to just pencil that in so that you have it? And a lot of times they take it and then I'm giving a hostess packet and then they're going to receive a gift from me two days later. So, um, that is how you get somebody from, I guess I would, you know, I don't know to, I guess I can pencil it in to, well, I must be having a party because now I have a present in my hand. I have a hostess packet. She sent me a text. I might as well go ahead with it. And of course there are people who get home and they're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? That's my niece's bridal shower. Do you have, but at that point, since they generally have a gift from me, they don't say cancel. They'll say, do you have the following Sunday? Or can I go two weeks later? Or can I do a Friday night instead? Or whatever it is. So um, I highly recommend all of those types of words to get people from, yeah, I guess maybe I would, to their name written in your margin so that you get to do Money Monday on a Monday. So that is the six key elements to a successful show. Any questions on any of those? What was number five again? I think I skipped five. Number five was your recruiting talk. Oh, uh, so number four was booking and number five was recruiting. Is that right? Number four. 
Is all of the seeds for booking and recruiting that you're planting throughout the show? Okay. okay. And then, yeah. And then number five is the actual recruiting talk. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Would anyone, did anyone in the course of this call identify something that you're realizing you're not doing in your current show that you're gonna buff up as a result of hearing this? I, I, my, I usually have a table and I set up all my jewelry on a table, on like three tables. Um, is it more beneficial to unroll them out of the rollers than have it all set up already? I think it's good to do what I call like a modified reveal. So, because to have it all out at once is overwhelming, I think, to people. And people who, um, people who get overwhelmed sometimes just default to like grabbing the dainty earrings and being like, I'll just take these because they can't even deal with the assault on the eyeball that they were getting when they first arrived. And now, meanwhile, I'm like, no, 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 you're not just getting a $16 pair of earrings in my head, you know? So I feel that what's working for me is to have, I always keep out up front the rings so that people can try on rings when they first arrive. And just because they don't fit anywhere else, I do have the wrap bracelets out as well. Plus, those are good for all of the people who come to a jewelry show under duress, where they're like, I don't even wear jewelry. They'll oftentimes be, you know, something to that. And then I will also display at that point, like three of the sets. Remember I was saying to show groupings? I'll do the three or four groupings. The other trays or rollers, in your case, I leave closed. And then as I talk about the groupings, I gradually uncover those and incorporate pieces from that into the show and the other groupings and stuff. That way there's a little bit at a time. The other thing is that that holds people's interest because if somebody looked at everything, what they think is everything, and didn't yeah. see anything they want, you could, now, now you're doing the show and they're not even paying attention because they're like, ah. I came for something yellow, she doesn't have it. So now they're not paying attention, as opposed to saying, well, she might still have something yellow, let me keep, let me keep paying attention. Okay. So I like to kind of do a half and half. Okay, I like the land. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming on today. Um, I hope that this helps bring you some structure to your shows so that you're able to be fun but organized. I've always prided myself on having that type of show. It's super fun, but it's absolutely structured <laughs> and, um, and organized in a way that benefits everyone, meaning the clients that come, the guests that come, are learning something. The hostess is getting the results of a show that's going to benefit her shopping spree. And it's, I'm going to get, you know, an evening of high sales, yielding me good commission and future business moving forward. And I've, um, I have run my show with these six key elements, I would say for pretty much all of my 18 years. So um, I, I do really recommend that you see what you can do to, buff up whatever areas you may be lacking in as it stands now. So thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.